Sziasztok! I'm H, and this is... This is an arm. This is not sugar. I'm so lonely, so lonely, so lonely and sad real alone. Many of you asked for a puppet tutorial and really many of you looked interested in our recent IG pictures we posted about this puppet we are making. So after all this waiting, welcome to my masterclass. Are we getting demonetized for this? We are making. So it felt only logical to share our secrets of... So not that recently we came up with the idea to create this puppet that's a miniature version of Napshuga and this is the one we are discussing today. So you can get your pencil and paper because I'm probably going to give away a few useful tips on making basic marionettes. So here we go. Here we go. First thing you want to do is to sketch your puppet. My character is a human being, so I like to keep the measures realistic. Even though I'm creating a bigger head today, because I wanted to have a controlled eye mechanism inside. But I also wanted my puppet to be small enough for suitcases. Of course, the limits of the puppet is only your imagination, so work with whatever measures you want. But in my opinion, it's only logical to work with realistic measures, because there's a reason why we evolved this way. And it helps with the physics part of puppetry. You'll want to have all the different moving parts outlined one by one. Paste your drawings on blocks of wood. You always must have a complete understanding of the 3D model you are making. Also, don't forget to draw the side perspectives on the blocks as well. First, I like to start with the head. In this case, with the eye. I can hear you! Alright, Captain! I'm using bigger wooden pearls. Paint them white and glue the printed iris of the subject on the surface. All I need to do is to flatten the surface of the bowl before I glue the iris on. And for finishing, I put epoxy resin on the surface. It creates a lovely glass eye look. And it also protects your work. After the eyes are made, I use polymer clay for the face. Uh, I'm using the best I could find, which is, I believe, Sculpey. It has a perfect color and it is very easy to use. All you have to do is keep everything very clean while using it. Otherwise, it might absorb some dirt. And it will, trust me. It happens all the time with me, so probably when we are finished with the puppet, my wife's going to paint the face as well. But we talk about that in part two. Because relatively to the wood, the polymer clay is rather heavy. I'm only using it for the face and use some homemade glue to make paper mache. Voila! So I get a full head. In this case, I didn't go for perfection as I'm going to give her hair later that will cover up the errors. Almost forgot that blinking eye mechanism. If you've seen our older videos you might know a way to do it, but in this case, because of the physics of a marionette, I needed to add a little lead weight to it, so it will sit back to open eye position whenever this string is passive. Let's take a look at the body now. We have all these little pieces and many different ways and needs to create its joint. I'm mostly using wires to create wire joints in a semi-implant way, if that makes any sense. But it will, let me show you what I mean. With this technique you can create little rolls that will serve as one half of the joint and simply bend the other wire into it. I'm using them for knees and <coughs> elbows. Coronavirus! Notice the shape of the arms and the legs. They can fold only to a certain point, just like real body parts. You could find many different ways to fix the legs to the pelvis. 
but as always it needs to fit your needs. I've chosen to use wires here as well as I'm creating a dancer and I have more options changing this part of the mechanism when I'm done in case I'm not really happy with the outcome. The shoulders need to be a little more flexible in this one. So I'm using a rubber band to keep them in place. Now the neck is a tricky part. I find this to be the best possible way to do it. This will let you make fixes at any time and create a really good hold. Simply drill a hole through the neck and lead a strong cord through the hole. Fix the cord with a nail in the torso and as well in the head in the same fashion. One thing you must always consider is that a harder cord makes a stronger neck. Let's take a look at Napsugai, who is in the meanwhile carving the hands to perfection with the help of a scalpel. Scalpel works just fine when you are working with soft wood, like pine, like, like crisp pine. To, to be our weight. This is still rolling. So where were we? I'm sure you have loads of questions. Like, what's that whole thing in the chest? And, and won't you have to make heavier feet so your puppet can move more lifelike? The answer to both of these questions is yeah, that, that can't be the same answer. Can it? Yes, you have to. We don't have much time, so let me try to explain. I'm using a potato to create tiny lead things and they go into the tiny feet things and voila, they are heavier, smooth and nice moves, mademoiselle. The chest part is for something like a spirit animal. We've created a wire door so we can lock up this animal until we are brave enough to find out why they were locked up in the first place. But more on that on part 2, or episode 2, or something like that. Hoo-wee, what a cliffhanger, oh boy, oh my, that's a real crazy ending, huh? But oh, I, I, I haven't even talked about that beautiful oil we bought in Ikea for a Bergen, and gosh, it works so well, so very well. Don't forget to subscribe, do all the things you have to do, there are going to be things and links and windows and and it's very late good night and why why all the cds you're asking what century is this i i know that's that's a good question for another time.